Hello, welcome back, and welcome for those who are new here. This is part three of the series on Kaggle's M5 forecasting competition. In parts one and two, we went through an overview of our objectives, data provided, and the custom evaluation metric designed for this problem. If you want to recap, I'll link those videos right here. In this video and the next one, we're going to go over some naive forecasting methods. To get a baseline performance score for any forecast, we'll first need to write the evaluation metric into code, and we'll be going through how to do this through a level-by-level -level aggregation. I'll make the notebook for these code public and links down below in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful, and if you find anything wrong with the ways I'm approaching these, please help me by leaving a comment below. Okay, let's get started. The custom evaluation metric WRMSSE score was explained in a previous video, so I won't go into too much details here. But as a gentle recap, forecast for each series is given by a root mean squared scaled error or RMSSE calculated by this equation. Then they're weighted based on the total dollar sales of the last 28 days in the trading set. Given all the series in level 12, we just need to aggregate and divide to get the weight for a higher level. For example, if we want to calculate weight of the series total sales of all products in California, which sits in level 2, we'll need to add up dollar sales of all items in California, divided by the sum of total sales of all items in California, Texas, and Wisconsin, and then divided by 12, which is the total number of levels. Once we get a weight assigned to each series, we can write a function to calculate the RMSSE, multiply them by weights and add. So here are the steps to take in order to get a performance score for an AE forecast. First, calculate weights for all the level 12 series, then use the naive logic to make forecasts for each of the level 12 series. Third, and for forecast ground truth values and weights for all the higher level series by aggregating. Step four, calculate RMSSE for all the series using the equation. And step five, multiply weight by respective RMSSE and add all these products. We'll walk through the code using the example where we just predict all zeros. Then once we see how this works, we can just change our predictions and run the evaluation steps. First, we need to import all the libraries we're going to use. And use pandas.readcsv to read in the data. We'll store the main training data in a cell's training validation.csv as a pandas data frame in a variable called df. Then in order to find the dollar sales, we'll need to get the selling price of a product for each day. We can get the weekly product price from the sellprices.csv, so we'll just store that data from a variable called priceDF. Let's take a look at what DF and priceDF looks like. There isn't really a trivial way to merge these two data frames, so we'll have to do some pre-processing in order to map the products and dates. To map the products, we see that DF stores all the level 12 series and assigns a unique ID value to each of them. This ID can be referenced in the price DF by combining the columns store ID and item ID. Then to map the date, we'll need to find a way to convert unique week ID in price DF into day number, which is how DF keeps track of date. We'll need help from calendar.csv, which tells us the day numbers in a given week. Let's read that into a variable called caldf. Now we have all the data we need to merge price with date, we can start the pre-processing. There are definitely other ways to do this, but I'm just going to go through how I did this. First, I converted the date identifier and caldf into actual integer date numbers. This dot apply lambda x, then a function of x, is basically going to treat all the values in the column d as x and convert them using the function on the right and we assign the values after the conversion back to the column D. Then we want to create the ID column in the price DF using the same format as DF. This is just going to be item ID underscore store ID appended with underscore validation. When we're running our local test, we want to treat the last 28 days given to us as our test set. So in the 1913 days given to us, the last 28 days are the test set. The 28 days before that will be where we take the dollar sales values from. These are the days from date number 1858 to 1885. Run a for loop where we say, for each day in this range, find the corresponding week ID from CalDF. Use the week ID to get the prices for that day from price DF. Merge the prices with DF by the column ID, which is now in the same format in both of these data frames. Then create another column in DF that stores the product of price and sales unit for this day, and that will be our dollar sales for one day. Once the loop finishes running, we'll add up all the new columns created horizontally for each of the level 12 series. 
and this is final dollar sales we want to use to calculate the weight. Drop the unnecessary columns, save space. Divide dollar sales for each series by the total dollar sales of all level 12 series. Then we'll get the weight for each series, that is before dividing everything by 12. We'll leave it like this for now and divide everything after aggregating weights for a high level series. On to step 2, we create a column to store predictions for each of the 28 days in our local test set. Call it f underscore day number and set every forecast to 0. Step 3, aggregate to get forecast, training values, and weights for all the higher levels. To keep things clean, we'll create another data frame to store all the higher level aggregation series, call it AGGDF. AGGDF will start with having just the level 1 series, which is aggregation of everything. Since this is the only series in its level, the weight will simply be 1 divided by 12. For all the levels from 2 to 11, we want to group series with different features. For example, level 2 is unit sales of all products aggregated for each state, so we will group by state ID. Level 7 is unit sales of all products aggregated for each state department combination. The example we had in the first video was, what's the aggregated sales amount for products and foods one department in California? So we group by both state ID and department ID. For each level, grouping by a list and do a dot sum function will add up all the level 12 series within a certain group. For example, grouping by item ID and store ID, one of the rows is indexed by item foods underscore one underscore zero zero one in state California. This row will be in level 11, which means we have inferred a higher level training set series, as well as its forecast. The weight of a high level training series will just be the sum of all its level 12 components divided by 12. Given any higher level series, if we add up all the weights in its level 12 components, the numerator would be equal to the sum of dollar sales of all these level 12 components, which by definition is the dollar sales of this higher level series. Since the denominator in each level is constant, where it is always going to be the total dollar sales for all items in all stores times 12, by deduction the sum of weights in level 12 components will be equal to the weight of its higher level aggregation. Now we can divide every level weight by 12 to get the final weight. As a sanity check, DF contains the 30,490 level 12 series, and DF plus AGG DF gives us the total 42,840 series. And all weights sums up to 1. Just as a side note, this is likely not exactly 1 because a lot of the level 12 weights are very small, which in our computer storage floating point after certain decimals loses precision. On to the final step calculate RMSSC for all series using the equation. Define a function RMSSE that takes inputs, ground truth, forecast, and train set series. We need ground truth for this yt here, forecast for the yt hat, and the training set series for the denominator. This function basically implements this equation here. And there's a bunch of if statements, just to make sure we can properly process both array inputs if we're scoring series by series, and matrix inputs if we're scoring a list of series at the same time. To make things easier for later, let's find all the column names in DF that stores these series. The training series columns are every point until the last 28 days. The ground truth for the test set is the last 28 days. And the forecast columns are identified by starting with a capital F underscore. Now we can typecast these columns as NumPy arrays and throw them into our MSSC function for both DF and HGDF. This commented out part is an example of calculating scores series by series. This takes way too long, but you can use this to validate that scores by matrix calculations agree with row by row calculations. The WRMSSE is simply weight times RMSSE, and our final weight score is the sum of both our level 12 series in DF and all the higher level series in AGGDF. And we get our final score here. I'm going to end this video right here. In the next video, I'll quickly go over some other naive forecasting methods such as taking average through all history, using just the values from the previous 28 days, taking the means of a number of previous days, or taking average for all the previous weeks. 
Please don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. See you then.